Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I have the Heathkit microprocessor trainer out and I'm trying to enter a program in Tiny Basic. So this microprocessor trainer has the accessory on it and that gives you access to a subset of Basic that is in uh, one of these chips but um, I can't get the program to run and there's something going on with the communication. Uh, I had purchased a uh, USB or serial RS232 uh, to USB adapter and then I'm using um, a terminal emulator and I'm trying all these different settings and I can't get the communication just right. There's something off. Now the last time I entered this program I use this beast here. This is a VT100 by Digital Equipment Corporation that I had pieced together. I built this frame out of some scrap metal bars here. I don't know where I got those from. Home Depot maybe. And then I purchased some plastic, tried to make a little enclosure for the keyboard and something to mount this main board on the side here but extremely high voltage here danger it's all open got this fan going on this hasn't been on for years I uh, blew all the dust out of it with some canned air and fired it up it's working keyboard was a little touchy there because the uh, connector probably tarnished but I'm inching my way into getting this working uh, if, I, if I can just get the program entered then I could get it onto cassette where I can have it permanently so anytime I want to load it because you lose the program once you turn this off once you turn the microprocessor trainer off it's gone so I'm hoping that with this it seems to be working uh, the manual says that use about I think a 200 uh, 300 transmit and 300 receive for the baud rate but it seems to be working with 600 so I'm hoping to be able to enter this program that's really cutting edge gives you the space travel uh, experience and this is old school so I've got this monitor here that has this tube in it that I don't know might have like 20 or 30 thousand volts on it spewing out x-rays let's see if I can get this program loaded so there are some programs in this manual here that you get with the uh, input output memory and input output accessory for the ET3400 and the program I want to enter is again like I said in tiny basic and let's see yeah so the program that I want to enter is in tiny basic and it's the lunar lander and this program was written in August of 77. So what you're in this monitor routine here, you type in, let's see, G1C00. So let's type in G1C00. And that's HTB1 tells you that you're now in Tiny Basic. So this particular program is about 60 lines of code and I won't know if um, I've entered it correctly until I go try to run it. So let me get started. 10 REM Lunar Lander So 
So I'll get back to you once I finish entering this in and then we'll see if it works. All right, so I've got the program entered and running. And this is a simulation of landing the LEM on the lunar surface on the moon. So if we press, type in run here. Try to land the LEM on the surface of the moon by entering fuel burn rates when requested. Good luck. So I have uh, 115 for fuel speed minus 70 height 541. So I'm descending. So let's put in a burn rate of 10. And the fuel's down to 105. We've slowed down to 67. And, but we're still at a height of 472. Height 57, we're still going pretty fast. Good. Give it a good burst here. 15. Oh, crashed. 58 units of fuel remaining, produced an explosion covering 2,100 square miles of lunar surface. Lem destroyed, you blew it. Another game, yes. Speed has increased, I'm at 2. Ah, uh, better give it a 3. Lem on surface of the moon, congratulations, perfect landing. I made it. Who needs the Nintendo Switch? This is exciting stuff. Finally landed on the surface of the moon. Now I need to see if I can save this program successfully to tape. Another program? No. Now because I'm in Tiny Basic, I can just type in save. Get my re tape recorder hooked up. Alright, all I have to do now is uh, take my tape recorder and I've got the cable to the mic input. And the other side is the output on the back of the accessory. And let me type in save. Hit record. And tape. And then enter, enter save. So there's save. It's not too user friendly, there's something going on. And see what happens here. All right, so I've got the program saved. Press play here. I wasn't sure if it was saving at first, so I saved for about 10 seconds and then played back until I finally heard uh, the audio. This program takes about three minutes to save, so you can see there I have it. And there, there are no visual cues on the microprocessor. There are when you go to load the program from the tape. Now the only nerve-wracking thing is to turn this off, turn the microprocessor trainer off, I'll have lost everything, and if it doesn't uh, work, if I can't reload the program, I'd have to type that all back in again. So on this to get out of Tiny Basic, you type in buy. Back in the monitor routine here. So the only thing I have to do is hit reset. That's that. Turn this off. I hope everything goes okay. I want to type all that in again. So you can see I've got everything off. 
And like I was saying, when you save, you don't get any visual cues from the microprocessor train. And when you load, you do get a flashing segment here on this LED that tells you that it's loading. But I wasn't certain if it was working because it seemed like, you know, once I said save, it took forever and it, it takes more than three minutes to save this program, which I think is being saved at uh, 300 baud to the tape. So let me turn everything back on. Oh, I unplugged everything. Yeah, with this old electronics, I don't feel comfortable leaving it plugged in all the time. So I unplug it. So turn this on again. Turn this on, I got CPU up. Let's turn on the VT100. Slowly but surely, I've got the cursor there once it warms up. So now I need to take cable and plug it into the ear jack. Cue this up. And on the microprocessor trainer, I enter do 1400. And now I have the monitor prompt on the terminal. Now to get in Tiny Basic I type G 1 C 0 0 return. That's the Tiny Basic prompt. Now I can type in load, queue up the tape hit return on the keyboard. Play. And then if everything goes correctly, this LED should start flashing. This little decimal point there. There it is. That takes about three minutes. All right, the program has been loaded. You can see the LED stop flashing, and I should be able to say run, and run the Lunar Lander program. There it is. So now I just want to see if I can hook this up uh, to the Dell computer and the Optiplex, and see if I can get this running through that RS-232 USB adapter. So now I have the Heathkit microprocessor trainer hooked up to this USB serial converter. Hooked up to the Dell Optiplex. And now I'm communicating with the uh, microprocessor trainer through this TerraTerm terminal emulator. And then I'm able to run the Lunar Lander program. now. I can list the program. And I can run the program. So this is the Lunar Lander program running on the Heathkit microprocessor trainer 3400 written in Tiny Basic. Tiny Basic is a subset of Basic that you get uh, when you hook up your microprocessor trainer to the memory I.O. accessory unit for the 3400 and I was able to uh, type that program in and then save it to tape so I don't have to type that in again and uh, reload it back onto the microprocessor trainer after I already had, uh, turned it off because when you turn it off, it's volatile memory. You lose all, uh, everything stored in memory. So if you found this video interesting, feel free to like, subscribe, and or comment. And thanks for watching.